Welcome back. Now it's time for linking words. I think this might be the easiest for you. What is the purpose of them? Well, it will help your reader to follow your thoughts and to vary your language because if you start a sentence with this word, you will have to change your word uh, structure a little bit and your sentence will be a little bit nicer to read. Um, for instance, if you would like to present sequence, you would like to present something in order. You say first or firstly, secondly, thirdly, next, in addition, another, in conclusion. If you would just like to add something within the same paragraph, you can say, well, in addition, furthermore, also, as well as. And sometimes, uh, I know you're writing um, argumentative essays or if you would like to present two opinions in a book that you've read then contrast is really good you can say this is it however there is another point of view here nevertheless or although this person thinks this uh, mr professor thinks this mr professor this you can also say in contrast to this opinion we have the other one or on the contrary and then you present a totally different thing. When you personally would like to present your conclusions, you can say as a result or as a consequence, we can see. Or as a consequence, it is obvious that. Therefore, consequently, due to hence, hence is perhaps not a word that you use that often. And here we come to something that is very important for you when you're writing essays, and that is to motivate your, your opinions. Those words are quite easy. The reasons for, because, since, as, because of, you know them already. So use them. Sometimes you would like to compare. And then you say, similarly, likewise, um, compared to or just as. And all of a sudden, your text becomes nicer. If you would like to stress something or emphasize something really important, you can start a sentence saying, obviously, or it is clear, but generally, admittedly, um, clearly, undoubtedly, then you really show that this is something that you find really important without presenting your personal opinion and saying, I think. If you would like to present an example, as you found in the quotes, such as including, for example, for instance, um, there you got it. And now I would like to come to something that I found at the Oxford Royal uh, site. Fill what you use for words and phrases for top-notch essays. This is something that you can bring along later on at the university as well. Uh, and uh, I won't go through all of this, so I really hope you will download the PowerPoint presentation or the PDF. Because here it's important that you sit down and, and think about how can I use them when I write. For instance, uh, general explaining in order to, in other words, to put it in another way. You hear yourself. All of a sudden it becomes formal. Instead of, I'm not going to say instead. In order to understand X, we first must understand Y. That's how you can present uh, arguments, for instance. If you would like to add something, as I mentioned before, you have them here. And if you would like to demonstrate a contrast, so you see, it's actually the same as I showed you on the single image before. But here you have examples how to use it, real sentences. And sometimes it's good to take time and look it through and see, hmm, I could use that in my essay here. And uh, at, now when we've done this, I really hope you take time for this. There are four basic sentence patterns in English that could be good to revise. Because these four sentences can really enable you to vary your text quite a lot. You can see here four examples that describe exactly the same thing. A simple sentence. Then you say, Mr. Potato Head eats monkeys. I refuse. A compound sentence now there are many beautiful grammatical words here so don't get fooled by that but look at the sentence mr potato head eats them for breakfast every day 
but I don't see the attraction. Eating them makes him happy. However, he can't persuade me. Hmm? Now you see the sentence is longer and it doesn't start with I refuse. It says eating them makes him happy. However, he can't persuade me. So I ended up at the end of a quite long sentence with me. If you have a complex sentence, look at this example. He, that is Mr. Potato Head, is now replaced with he. Recommends them highly because they taste like chicken when they are hot. And now there is a little um, appeal to me again. Although chicken always appeals to me, I still feel skeptical about monkey. And then you, um, Mrs. Potato Head is included. Mrs. Potato Head, uh, because she loves us so much, has offered to make her special monkey souffle for us. She can cook it however she wants. Although I'm curious, I'm still skeptical. So here I end up, but you see the swap of the sentences. Although it's mentioned twice, what happens then? That shows that there is a little bit ambivalence included here. At the last one, you have Mr. Potato Head said that he would share the secret recipe. However, however if he does, Mrs. Potato Head will feed him to the pir piranhas. So we are both safer and happier if I don't eat monkeys or steal recipes. So, you see, in this entire little sentence, all the information from the other sentences are found. But you can s explain them in different ways. But of course, Mrs. Potato Head, as you read about in number three, needs to be presented before you can write sentence number four. But you can see there are different ways of writing and it's much nicer to read, as you see in number three, different sentences, different length, commas, to make a pause, to insert something, like all the chicken always appeals to me, comma. You have another clause, I still feel skeptical about the monkey. So, in the next one, here she inserts something. Mrs. Potato Head, because she loves us so much, has offered, and so forth. Instead of just saying Mrs. Potato Head has offered to make a special monkey souffle for us. No, then you insert because she loves us so much. So this is also something that you can do, that you can expand your sentences, insert something interesting. Hmm? So how could you vary yourself more? Let's look at the next one, how to vary a sentence.